Hello, and welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, we help members of the public to get the very best price for their antiques and collectibles. We sit you down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table. I'll have a gamble, give you 200. No, no. You're good, you are. Yeah. If I don't think that's enough money, I'm going to say reject that out of hand and gamble. Go to auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Thank you very much. Today the show comes to you from Scunthorpe. There's a great crowd of people here. They've been here since early this morning. They are determined to do business. You know why? They want to walk away with the real deal. <laughs> First deal of the day is risky business. Not 100% sure if it's gold or not. It, it, if it turns out that it's a really good gold, then I could lose money. Or if it goes the other way, I could gain money. I really don't know. It's a gamble, Carl. We don't have the ability to test the carrot in the dealer's den, so will Alison Chapman put her money on the line and take a chance? Oh. David and auctioneer Colin Young are keeping a close eye to see how the deal unfolds. So, how did you come by it? Th this piece came to me in a house clearance, in a box, which were seemingly being thrown away. Um, I've had a look at it, I can't see any hill marks. Although, I believe it to be gold. Hmm. But without actually testing it, you cannot tell. No. And the piece has been mercury gilded, so do you see where you've got this frosting? Right. That's mercury gilding and that always gives the appearance of being a very high character gold. If you looked at that, yeah. you would make the guess, and it would only be a guess, yeah. that it was 18 carat. Right. So this is a prize medal um, that's been awarded to someone who was trained to be a doctor, a physician, is that right? Yes, so we understand, yeah. It's named uh, to somebody that went on to become quite a uh, successful physician. I actually found some information about the guy and what he did in his later years, and I've brought some of that information for you today, if it's any help. To have a look uh, at. Yeah, that's uh, some of the... It's the... always very helpful. So his name was Dr Edward John Cave, and he died in Bath. After a few days of illness, the city lost one of its most brilliant of the many able physicians that have served. Well, that's wonderful, isn't it? So he was a successful physician. Oh, and a good billiards player. Oh, well, there that, you that are. makes all the difference. Yeah. <laughs> a very interesting quote on, I suppose, a medal. Yes. Uh, being awarded to a doctor on mm -hmm. his doctorate. Mm -hmm. You've looked at that coin. We yeah. haven't had a test on it. No. Nope. So is it nine, is it 15, is it 18? What is the eye of the professional telling us? Uh, the eye of the professional is that you actually don't come up with a figure if you don't know what it is. Um, and so from the very sort of sketchy information we've got, I can give you a really good estimate on it, somewhere between maybe 350 and maybe 700 pounds. Ah. If it is nine carats, the valuation starts round about the nine carat price at say 380 or thereabouts, a little less, and it goes up to 770. That's taking into account if it turns out to be 18 carat and you put the tester on it. Yeah. Now, Alison deals in jewellery. She's a canny lady. What's she going to make of it? Is she going to think it's nine? Is she going to think it's 18? Well, let's find out and see what Alison puts on the table. So, we've weighed it and it's about 32 grams. Right. So that's 100, 200, 300, 350, 360. Now that, if it was nine carat, is what I would be paying. This is now where I start gambling. Let's see what the gambling money is. <laughs> oh, you like a bit of a gamble, don't you, Mr Dickinson? 100. 200 and 50. That's a real gamble. OK. If it was only nine carats, it would be about 360. That's what I put on the table. And that's what you have there. But now, Alison's put more money down. Now, what does that tell us? 
That tells us that Alison thinks it probably is 18 carat. And if it's 18 carat, it is 770. If we look what's on the table now, we see there is 610 pounds. The question is, could you do better? Now, the difficulty is if you go to the auction, the auctioneer will take off you 15% from the hammer price of 610. So, so you're the, actually saying it's a blinding offer. I'm not saying it's a blinding <laughs> offer. What I'm saying is, Alison knows she has us in a stranglehold that if we go to the auction, we may fare even less. So that's, okay. that's your judgment. So tell me, Carl, do you feel lucky? <laughs> Can you do a little bit better? No, nope. that's a good offer. That is, that is me on a limb. Yeah. I think we can have a deal. Definitely. All right, we've got a deal, Carl. Well done. Thank it's you. been a lovely deal as well. I've enjoyed it. I've got £610. I think it's quite a fair price. Uh, Alison took a gamble. She's not 100% sure. Pretty good going, £610 for something found in a box. But what carat gold will the coin turn out to be? Find out later in the show. Where with Debbie Serple will she be sweet on her first item of the day? I brought four Lorna Bailey sugar shakers. They are limited edition. I've had the pleasure out of them, and I think it's now time for somebody else to have pleasure out of them. Tell me what you bought. I brought four Lorna Bailey sugar shakers. Right. They're, they're very iconic, but they're iconic for reasons that, from a distance, people who don't know Lorna Bailey would think, oh, Clarice Cliff, yes. because um, she was massively influenced by that famous potter. And um, Lorna is a potter who was born in 1978. Um, so these are ones that she will have made probably in the late 20th century, having joined her father's pottery in Stoke-on-Trent. So mm -hmm. she's a Stoke-on-Trent girl. Mm -hmm. Let's have a little look at them. What she's done is she's made them and she will give each piece or each design a particular name. So this one, for example, is Fire, I believe. Yeah, right. This one's Thunderbolts. Yeah. Sunset, is that yeah, right? And right. Twister. Yes. They're very nice, they're very decorative and I can see why you bought them. Mm. I will make you an offer, we'll see how we go. Yes. Okay. 20, 40, 60 pounds. Very definitely no. Definitely no. Am I miles and miles and miles off? You're, you're some way off, yes. Some way off. Um, I do want to make you a sensible offer, but I do want to make a little bit of a profit. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm pulling the, you know, take pity on me. I'm a poor antique dealer. Um, I'm, I'm a poor nurse. <laughs> <laughs> right. OK, let's up, up the ante then. How about £80? I think I'd still like some more. I'll make you one more offer and I'll push my offer on up to £90. <laughs> Is that you? Before you make a decision, let's just look at these. I mean, they are inspired by Clarice Cliff. Yeah. Our independent value as an auctioneer, they are saying 80 to 120. Mm -hmm. Well, even at 120, it's 30 quid a piece. Mm -hmm. I figure they've got to be worth at least that. They're so decorative, they're so cute. They're so now. I think they can do good at the auction. So I'm going to say I think they're worth more than that. Thank you. There's a part of me that agrees. I'm going to I'm going to try and see. And please say no if you're not happy. Replace the ten with a twenty. And that's me out as a boring early English pottery dealer <laughs> who's who's dipping my toe in the water. What to do? What to do? Ooh. Um, I'll go to auction. <laughs> Thanks Thank again, you. and good luck. Thank you. And I really look forward to seeing what she gets for them at auction, because maybe if she does really well, I might be a little less hesitant another time. The sugar shakers shimmy off to auction, but how will they fare under the gavel of auctioneer Colin Young? Now, Angela, you brought along four sugar shakers. 
Where did you get them from? An auction. Come on, what did you pay for them? £20. OK, well, I thought you'd got yourself a cracking guy at £20. Now, you turned down a hundred quid. Did you do the right thing? Cost you 20. Yeah. Could have taken a profit of 80 quid. Yeah. It was a fantastic offer, but I had a wonderful experience and I didn't want it to end. OK. I like that. OK, here they are now. There are four of them. But has Angela done the right thing? Who's going to start me at 150 for him? 150. 100 to go, surely. 100 pounds, anybody? There's four of them. 100 pounds, anyone? 100. 80 to go if we must. 80. £20 each, £80, pounds, anybody? £80, pounds bid. Straight in at 80. Five, Good start. £80 bid, five. Now look at what we're selling here at 80 bid, 85 bid, 90 bid, five bid, 100, no, £95 pounds bid. At 95, any more bids now? 100 bid. Let's go, 110, 120. They're going for it now. 120 is all bid of 120. Any more bids now? So I'll take five as a last shout. 125, it helps. 130, 135 now. At 130 bid, five now, may I say, at £130, and five or not, then selling. 130. Thank you very much. Good news. Got Brilliant. the ambience of the show yeah. and got the dodge as well. <laughs> so, right. we've got 130 quid. Take off the commission. I make that just over £106. So, you gambled. You must be very pleased. I am. I've had a wonderful experience. Thank you very much. OK. Thanks. Well, it's been a lovely experience meeting you, Angela. You've enjoyed the day. We've Certainly enjoyed have. the day. And you've got the real deal. Will this next lot give Simon Schneider something to write home about? Now, Debbie, you've brought in a collection of postcards. That's right. How did these come into your possession? Um, they was passed down um, through my boyfriend's family from his... I would say it's cost his great aunt. There was his great granddad's when he was in the war. Oh, wow. um, sending him to his wife and other members of the family, I think. I mean, I've got to point to this one. This is what I would call a, a, perhaps a sweetheart postcard. This dates from, uh, well, obviously 1914, 18. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous to show how much I love you. I mean, they're really romantic. I just think they're absolutely Beautiful, gorgeous. Aren't they? uh, there's quite a few of them. There's too many for us to sort of show each one individually. But there's a nice collection of this type of postcard here. And then there's also a nice collection of the embroidered ones as well. So someone's taken a, a great deal of time and a great deal of interest to collect all these cards over mm. the years and I think it's fascinating that it's somebody who has actually received them all rather yeah. than somebody who's gone out and collected yeah, them over the years so it's a very very nice collection and I think there's approximately about 150 cards does that sound about never right? Counted You've never counted I think <laughs> approximately something like that so we have to put a value on these so it comes down to money now, doesn't it? Fire away. <laughs> to what, what I contempt you with. I like them. I think they're, it's a really nice collection. I'd like to own them. And to a few 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. That's not enough, is it? Definitely not. One, two, three, four, five. 200 pounds. No. More than that. You're more? I think that's a good bid. Yeah, I would like more. I'll go one more. I've got 220 down. Can you not give any more? I want to try and earn a little bit on them. I think they're probably worth about 250. So I'm sort of not leaving myself much of a margin, am I? I know we wanted more for them than that, for definite, you see, so. I don't want you to put an auction. 240 quid. Now that's a good bid. Can you do one more? Honestly, I think that's enough to give from 240. Because if they're worth 250, I've left myself a tenner profit. It's a good bid. That's, is it? I think so. I really don't think You're so. You're not really tempted to put one more down. Well, would you take 250 pounds for them? If you say that is a fair bid. Well, I'm saying it's a fair bid. What I'll do is take that 40 away. Put a 50 down, there's 250 down. I think it's a very fair bid, but Debbie, it's up to you to decide. Deal. Done. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>I'm very happy with the collection of postcards. I think there's some really nice examples of those sweetheart ones. The ones that, you know, were sent from the forces in the war. It's an original collection. I'm going to really upsell that. I think it's a really nice lot and I'm pleased with it. Coming up, it's Panto seated on David's table. You know how to boo out there, don't you? And if he doesn't get the right money, boo!
I'll be back in a second. Thank you very much. Oh. Am I getting some booing? He's behind you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't win all these deals, I promise. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Sunny Scunthorpe, where the antiques and collectibles have been coming in thick and fast. We're with David Hakeney. Will he be facing a huge bill with this next lot? Well, look what you brought in today. <laughs> Everyone knows what these are. Beswick. Beswick, Bezik, however you like to pronounce it. Yeah. If I turn one over, there's the mark. Well, Brian, are these something you've brought from home? Uh, they were my mother's. Uh, my mother died two years ago. When we cleared the house out, I've never had used them. They've been in a drawer. Oh. Yeah. I would guess these by the back stamp would be probably from the, uh, the 30s, wouldn't you think? Maybe so. Yeah. Well, they're lovely because they're in lovely condition, yes. which is the most important thing when it comes to china, porcelain, pottery. Yes. You mustn't have it damaged for the collectors. I'm not sure of the market of these at the moment. Are they on or off at the moment? On. <laughs> are they? I thought they might be. Mm. And if you're going to sell these, what are you going to do with the money? Uh, Prince of Wales Hospice at Pontefract. Very, very nice. Right, I better get steaming on today then. Well, I don't know. I bet these are about half a crown this set when they were new. Maybe so. Yeah. What about 40 quid? That's one bird. That's one? Oh, heck. <laughs> what about. And it's going to the hospice this month? Yes. I better, I better be very generous here. 60. Eighty pounds. It's a no. No. <laughs> Brian, I'm going to excite you. A hundred pounds. What do you no, think? Thank you. No. No. Well, first of all, I know that this, the proceeds, whatever, cash or auction, are going to a local hospice. Yes. Which is the Prince of Wales Hospice at Pontefract. Okay. For cancer. I'm going to lean on you in a second, David, to get you to put more money down, and I'm going to lean heavily on you because we all know what hospices do. Now, I can tell you that the independent valuers and the auctioneers, they're saying 80 to 120 pounds. I'm saying rubbish. Those are worth more than that. So I'm going to leave you with Dandy Dave here. <laughs> he knows it's for a hospice. <laughs> You know how to boo out there, don't you? And if he doesn't get the right money, boo! I'll be back in a second. Thank you very much. Well, I'm known as the most generous dealer here, so I'll say 120, 140 pounds, Brian. Not yet, no. Boo. Well, am I getting some booing? Boo. <laughs> that's for number three. <laughs> oh, Brian. <laughs> I'm not a charity, you know. I mean, it's a good charity. <laughs> I don't win all these deals, I promise. <laughs> £150, Brian. Oh. You'd rather go to auction? Yes, I would. I I hang on, let's <laughs> finish it. We might not want to go to auction. We might decide... Put a little bit more in, Dave. Another tenner. 160. What have we got there? 160. OK, there's the other 20. Let's make it up to 180. For the hospice, and I'm going to say, I think that's all right for cash on the day. Yeah. Shake his hands. You can take the booing away. <laughs> well, you might be able to boo a little bit. You didn't get 180, so. Ooh, okay. I never win. <laughs> Shake hands. Uh, thank Brian, you very much. Thank you. It's a great cause, isn't it? Yes. Will Simon go nuts for his next item? Pleased to meet you, Linda. Now, Linda, you've bought in this funny-looking cup. Yes, ugly, isn't it? This ugly-looking cup. Well, I actually <laughs> think it's very nice. <laughs> but I can see why you might think it's ugly. It's quite a funny-looking thing. It's what we call in the trade a coconut cup. And quite simply, because it's made from a coconut shell, mounted with silver on top. Mm. One of the most important things to look for with, with these coconut cups is that the shell itself is in good condition because once mm. the shells are cracked or damaged, they're very hard mm. to sell. But I've had a quick look at this one and thankfully the shell itself is in very good condition. Although if we look at the foot of the silver mounting here, there is a small repair that's been done probably right. quite a long time ago as well. That's not a recent repair, which does sort of detract mm. a little bit from the value of it. But it's quite a nicely engraved one, and it's got an engraving on the top which dates from 1807. Mm. So we're talking about something over 200 yes, years old, yeah. which when you think of it like that, it's fantastic that it's survived mm. in the condition it's in now. Yes. How did this ever come to be in your possession? Um, it had been at my mother's house for quite a long time, 
And when we were doing a house clearance, I found it in the back of a kitchen cupboard. And um, when you've got it in your possession, it's not something you've enjoyed having by the sounds of it? No, no. <laughs> well, I think we've got a nice item here. Yes. And I would like to buy it. Right. So shall I put some money down? Yes. And see if I can tempt you? Yeah. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120, 140, 160, 180 pounds. Would that surprise you? No, because my husband's been looking it up on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> that internet, it gets everywhere, yes, doesn't it? Yes, yes. But I do like it and I am prepared to go a little bit higher right. to try and tempt you. Yeah. I'll put down another 20. That's 200. And I'll put down another 20. That's 220 pounds. Mm. Yes. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. <laughs> there they are, standing in a row. Nice objects, these. And 1807. There isn't a silver mark, but it is um, engraved 1807. Yeah, with a, a, a name as well. Two to three hundred pounds is the independent values and the auctioneer. Maybe we could get you the 300 or a little mm. bit more, but it's a gamble. Go on, another 20 pound, Linda. Okay. I'm going to say, at that kind of money, you could do better, but... You might struggle. That, you might struggle after commission. That's not a bad offer. £240. David thinks it's a fair offer. Mm. I think it's a wonderful offer. <laughs> it's up to you, Linda. I think I'd rather go to auction, cos I think auction would be fun. Do and you? it's not about I don't money. want you to go to auction. I want you to sell it to me. But it's... I haven't come here about the money. £260. No, no, I think I'd rather take it to auction. £280? No. I like this and I'd really like to buy it. I've offered more than I want to give for it now. But I really... Because you're taking it away from me, it's made yes. me want it even yes. more. £280? Yes. No, no, I'm going to go to auction with it. £300? No. Take it to auction and the very best of luck. I hope right. it does well for you and I hope you don't end up with less than I've offered you. I think the auction would be fun. I wanted the coconut cup. I thought I made a very strong bid for the coconut cup. But I haven't got the coconut cup. I think going to the auction and having a day out with David would be much more fun than taking £300 home in my purse. Who can blame me, you know, a day out with David or £300? What would you choose? You could have offered the world, Simon, but Linda had her sights set firmly on the sale room. You turned down £300 in cash from Simon Schneider. Yes. Why did you do that? I suppose it's obvious to say you thought you could get more. No, no, I, it, it wasn't the money. It was more the fun of coming today to the auction. OK. Did you hear that? The fun of coming to the auction. Meet the Jew, get the excitement here. The room's full. The reserve is quite low. It's 200, so yes. is it going to make the 300 or is it going to make less? Well, it's coming up now. Let's find out. So what should we say for this one? Who's going to start me? A couple of hundred for it. 200 pounds, anybody? 200. 150 to go then, surely. 150, anybody? Slow 120 start. 130 now. 120, 120, 130. 130 now. He needs to do a lot better than 40. that. 150, 160 now. 160, you're out on the net now. At 150, 160, order, 150, out on the internet, now. in the room, gone slow. At 150 bid, 60 now, 160, I've got 160. He's the gamble going to pay off. 180 Creepy. Now. 190, we're up to, 190, that bid was from Malta. We're now back in the UK at 190, is Malta coming back at 200? Malta, on the internet, it's amazing. Internet from all over the world. Bid. 220, back in the UK. 220, 240, you're coming back from Malta, no last call then going at £220. Gavel's gone down at £220, a little bit of a disappointment because we've still got commission to take off and that's going to leave you £180 to take home. Disappointed? No. I know you wanted to come to the auction but was it worth the difference in money to come to the auction? Yes. That's yes. what I like to hear. On the day you're going home with £180, Simon Schneider, our dealer, you had the real deal at 300 quid, mate. Linda lost out, but judging from her smile, the day out with David was well okay. worth it. Coming up, the Duke's been duped. Clever. Shrewd. Knows she's got us like this. I do. 
I'm a heartless woman. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Scunthorpe. Sit back and relax as Debbie casts an expert eye over her next item. John, what's the history of the chair? Well, it belonged to my, my grandmother, and uh, when she died, we, we, we took it like, because we quite fancied it. But uh, at the moment, it's taking a lot of space up, and we're redecorating, and I just thought I'd come and find out what it's worth. Right, OK. It's, uh, it's almost certainly late 19th century. Um, it has shades of arts and crafts about it, um, and a kind of, it's Puginesque as well, uh, which is sort of a, the style that it's, um, it appears to have. And this amazing scroll work here, which is really nice. It's, it's a grapevine, isn't it, by the looks of things? And I'll, I'm just going to turn the chair around and have a look at the side panels here. You've got a continuation of this sort of... Uh, uh, natural flowing lines of leaves and possibly a flower head here. Um, why did you want to get rid of it? Well, as I say, it's uh, taking a lot of room up and uh, we, we can't very well use it, it's too small for us. Um, just make a bit of room in the house. Yeah. You see, one of the things I like about it is its size, that it's not too overpowering. Mm. It's not the world's best made chair. The carving is what makes it. If you took the carving away and just had a look at the way in which it's made, it's literally this bit has been screwed onto the, mm. the legs. And at the back, this back piece has been screwed here to hold the seat section. So there's no clever joints, there's no, no. clever carpentry. The work is in this carving. Um, it's stained mahogany, almost without a doubt. Um, and it does have a, an appeal, I like it. So I will make you an offer. 20, 40 pounds. How do you feel about that? Mm, no, I don't think that's enough. You it's don't worth think more. it's enough? Do you think it's worth a lot more than that in your mind? I think so, yes. Yeah? I think it is. I'm thinking about what the retail price will be as a dealer, and I don't expect you to sympathise with a struggling <laughs> antique dealer, but if I put another £10 down... Um, put maybe, t uh, maybe another 10 and we'll have a deal. I know it sounds mean, but rather than the 60, how about we split the difference and we say 55? How do you feel about that? No, I don't think so. Well, let me tell you what the independent valuers say. They say 60 to 80. Perhaps today not the most commercial piece of furniture. This is a little dark. But it's quite a nice little item. There's a hall chair to be used as a child's chair. Not a bad thing, Debbie. I mean... Any chance of the extra fiver? Of course. Of course. If another fiver was down, in fairness, 60 to 80 was the estimation. If it got 80 in the auction, you'd still have 12 quid to take off. I think 60 is a fair price. Do we have a deal? Yeah. And what are you going to do with the money? Any idea? Well, I should be retiring this year, so I'll use it towards my holiday. All right, well, think of me. Right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. <laughs> It is what it is. It's a simple aesthetic movement chair. It's got quite nice carving. I think it's commercial. I think I'll be able to shift it on for a little bit of a profit. Fingers crossed. On the other side of the dealer's den, we're with Alison. It's silver, silver and more silver. And you have bought... <clears throat> ..all of this loot. Oh, that, right, yeah. Have you ever read the children's book, Burglar Bill? Mm, not yet, no. Oh. no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is wonderful. So how did you get all this? Uh, I did house clearances over ten years ago now, and silver wasn't such worth a lot back then, so I've just sort of accumulated it over the time, and the price has gone up now, hasn't it? So I'm, like, uh, getting married this year. Yeah. So... And you thought that it's ka time? ka time, yeah. yeah. That's it. Good time <laughs> to cash it in. Well, it is. I mean, yeah. you've got a, a sort of... Ornamental letter openers by way of a dagger. 
very interesting. It is interesting how people um, accumulate these things. That's right, yeah. Really? Yeah. Well, uh, it's scrap. There isn't really anything that we would sell on here, I don't feel. But, or maybe some of the charms, they look quite interesting. Yeah, baby's charms are quite nice, yeah. yeah. But how fascinating, I love that. Oh, that's good. I love doing a good old house clearance. Right. So you're getting money and you want cash for the wedding. That's right, yeah. Well, yeah. it's going to cost you a lot of money to get married, isn't it? It certainly is. All right, yeah. I'll get my cash on the table. So that's 100, <clears throat> 200, 300, 400, 500. It's getting fairly close, that. It's, it's good offer. It's getting, yeah. there, uh, getting there, like, yeah, definitely. Close. It's bought the cake and the dresses, that, so... Uh, we're <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky if you can buy a dress and a cake for 500. Why are you buying it for? A little bit you more, haven't maybe, been, then. You haven't been proper shopping yet, have you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. That will probably buy you one sleeve of the dress. Oh, right. A bit more than nothing, don't <laughs> and, we? And, and uh... half a tier of the cake. Right. Um, well, we're getting to the lean bit now. So I believe the bits I give you now is my easy profit. Oh, right. right. So... Sorry about that. I know. So, uh, 520? Yeah, it's getting there. Yeah, getting there. Getting there. Mr D. 550 to 650 is the estimation. And the scrap value by weight as of today is £638. 520, not a bad offer. And Alison, clever, shrewd, knows, knows she's got us like this. Because if we go to the sale room, should you get under the gaffel 520 pounds? Mm, pounds. Hard earned. Hard earned. And can I say how handsome real, you look today? Real money. <coughs> Sounding even better. I'm swinging toward. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> right. Don't you think he looks handsome okay. today? So at £520, if the gavel went down at 520 they would take off you 50%. And she knows this. Right. I do. I'm a heartless woman. You got me there. And so yeah. on the day, I'm going to say, she's got us again. Right. <laughs> right. Ah. Well, David summed it up, hadn't it, really? And uh, you squeeze one more? Or I one? could, couldn't I? Yeah. But I won't. What for the, what for the <laughs> wedding? Would that make you happy, an extra fiver? Go on, that's fine, yeah. All right, we've got a that. deal, babe. Lovely. Thank Thanks you very much. so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Coming up. A hundred pounds. No, definitely not. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> You're talking eight hundred thousand pounds easy. Maybe more. Has David bitten off more, more than he can chew? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. The team are in Scunthorpe today, and over on David's table, it's lights, camera, action. Well, you brought something along today that I've never bought before, but I've read lots about them. Posters. They are very collectible items now, bigger now than ever. And this is the great name. He's the King of Cool, Steve McQueen, yeah, the King of Cool. King of Cool, it's absolutely, Mark. Yes, yeah. every woman's dream, I think, that guy. Oh, absolutely. Without a doubt. Great film, this. Brilliant film, yes. Oh, they don't get any better, I don't think it Oh, would the best be. car chase ever. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Oh. Forget French Connection or any other. Yeah. When was it? How long ago? 68, 1968. I can't believe it. You'd think it was about 15 years ago, wouldn't wow, you? Long time ago. Happy days. This best, is an original. This is an original That's the poster. original, yes, original poster. It's in fantastic condition. Yeah. It's brilliant. I always look after him. I've got quite a, hundreds, hundreds of. Have you? Yes. How did you collect them? Where did you find them? I used to know the manager of the local ABC cinema. Ah. And uh, every year I'd buy him a bottle of whiskey and the manageress a box of chocolates. And all year round I'd collect all this memorabilia. You had a bit of foresight, Mark. I went all around Lincoln, Doncaster, all that, collecting I knew one day these. Yeah. But I was a, I'm a big film buff. I love films. Are you? Still go to the movies now, but I don't like the films they bring out. Not like the olden days. Like, oh, no, no, these were great like films, the big ones, yeah. And big great, ones. oh, I mean, Steve McQueen, you know. Steve McQueen, Burt Lancaster, oh, they were heroes. Those, yeah. Clint, even Clint Eastwood is still on the go. Oh, marvellous, marvellous. Yeah. You can't remember the names these days, can you? They come and go no, quickly. No, they're, they're not superstars anymore. George no. Clooney and Brad Pitt, they're nobody yeah. compared to That's Kurt right. Douglas and Burt Lancaster. I like, I like the old films. And do they produce these posters still? I can't think they do. Not these, unless they bring them out as replicas. Yeah. You yeah. cannot obtain them anymore, like... You could mm. in the 60s and 70s. So you've got several of these, have you? Several hundred posters. Have you? Yes, several. Mark, I better go have the cash out and see Fine, if I can uh, tempt you here. 
I'm buying something I do not understand, so I'll say 50 pounds. And you're going to say definitely not. Definitely not. 100 pounds. No, definitely not. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> Two oh six, it was valued between four hundred and six hundred pound. But the posters go up in; they never come decrease in price. They always go up. Mm. So I'm thinking, this is like the only one to go now. And I, I you're talking eight hundred thousand pound easy, maybe more, maybe more. Believe me, believe me more. Really? Yeah. I'll have a gamble. Give you two hundred. No. <laughs> you're good. You are. Yeah. Mark, I think you should go to auction with this. I think it's a marvellous poster. Yeah, I'll do that. And what are you going to do with the money? I'm going to pay for my funeral. Oh, dear, mate. Don't In a few me. years, hopefully. Oh, but, a lot of uh, years, I've got uh, big hopes for a black hearse, horse-drawn hearse, just like in the Magnum 7 with Steve McQueen and Hill Brenner. Gee whiz, yeah, you're organised. I'm you going out with a bang. <laughs> Came on the show, sat down with David Hakeney. That's right. You turned down 200 quid, you did I the did right this. thing. It's here in the sale room. Mm -hmm. The auctioneer said 1,000 to 1,500. Is he right? Because the reserve is 1,000 quid. It's a great poster. It certainly is. What a film. It's coming up now. What should we say for this one? Uh, start me at 1,000 pounds for it. 1,800 to go then, surely. 800. Seven bid. At seven. Seven's now. been bid. Seven hundred bid. Seven fifty now. At seven fifty now. Seven fifty. At seven fifty. Eight hundred and fifty. Eight fifty. Nine hundred now. Nine hundred pounds on the net. Nine hundred. Close. Nine fifty. One thousand surely. One thousand on the internet. Eleven hundred I have on the book. At eleven hundred. What do you have for me now? King of Cool. Eleven fifty on bid there. At eleven fifty and twelve now. At twelve surely. 12, 12 on bid. At £1,200, we're on the market at £1,200. Are there any more bids? I'll take 25 as a last call. We sell then at £1,200. Thank you very much. First reaction? Great reaction. Not oh. very cool, not very cool. <laughs> I mean, take away the commission. It's about 980 quid or a few pounds more. Fine. £984. Pounds. So That's you it. must be very pleased. I'm very pleased, yeah. Terrific. The question is, what are you going to do with all this money? It's going to go towards my funeral, Bill. Going to go what? Towards my funeral, Bill. Going to go towards your funeral? Bill? Yeah, I'm going to go out in style. Now, how are you going to go out in style at your funeral? When the Magnus 7 film we see McQueen Yulbrenner went up Boot Hill and Hurst. Yeah. And I've got exactly, that's exactly how I'm going that Just way. Just hang on a sec. You remember the film? Steve McQueen. Yulbrenner again. Yulbrenner sat on the Hurst like that. That's the one. And that's the way you're going to go yep, out, which style. is probably 20, 30, 40 <laughs> years from that's now. So <laughs> uh, and you're going out in style Definitely like this. Style. Definitely. Tell you what, never mind Steve McQueen, this man's cool. <laughs> that is the real deal. Mark looked straight down the barrel and cashed in. But have our dealers managed to do the same? They've offered over £2,200 today, but who's come out on top? David paid over the odds for the flying ducks. Well, I'm known as the most generous dealer here. He sold them on to a client and made a loss, but didn't mind, as it was all for a good cause. I mean, they're really romantic. I just think they're absolutely Can't gorgeous. Out there. The charming postcards were sold to a private collector, netting Simon a small profit. It's scrap. There isn't really anything that we would sell on here, I don't feel. Staying true to her word, the silver went into the melting pot, proving to be a nice little earner for Alison. And as for that gold coin she took a punt on... Is it 9 carat? Is it 18 carat? Or could it be 22 carat? It turned out to be 20 carat gold. Alison, you made a fantastic 64% profit. But the big winner of the day was Carl. After he found the coin in a box, he walks away with a whopping profit. Well done. Thank it's you. been a lovely deal as well. It's been a great day here in the sale room. Lots of excitement, lots of bidding, lots of buying. That's what I like to see. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. See you.